On the news tonight, stiffer penalties await power infrastructure vandals as federal government and the National Assembly adopt new measures. More stringent penalties in the Amendment to the City Act for three things deal different, power theft, and power asset vandalization. Parliamentary holidays and legislative activities correspondent takes a look at the nature and essence of recess in the National Assembly. After one full year of work, you are entitled to vacation. Good evening and thanks for joining us on NTA Parliamentary News. I am Abakar Galadima. Now, let's start with the story on power infrastructure. With increasing cases of vandalism of power infrastructure in the country, the federal government and the National Assembly are adopting measures to guard power facilities while applying stringent penalties against vandals. This was an engagement between the House of Representatives Committee on Power, the Ministry of Power, and the Transmission Company of Nigeria. Joshua Ojito reports. The continuous vandalism of power infrastructure from north to south is of concern to lawmakers and stakeholders in the Nigeria electricity supply industry and the House Committee on Power is engaging relevant players on way forward, insisting vandals must be punished. More stringent penalties in the amendment to electricity act for three things deal default power theft, and power asset vandalization. No doubt the good work has been done in the electricity act, but we're also looking at some amendments where we have to bring very stiff punishment for vandals. But we also want to have a partnership with the state government so that they can put their own vigilante or whatever way they can do to assist us. When you bring one tower down, it costs us around 200, 300 or 400 million. Other issues that dominated conversation are the need to sustain current momentum of power supply, how to address liquidity crisis in the sector and electricity tariff where lawmakers submit that going forward, all players, including customers, should be carried along before any tariff review is implemented. The power minister highlights gains of the sector in the last one year, which are responsible for improved supply while calling for legislative support and increased budgetary provision for execution of power projects. The engagement between the lawmakers, policymakers, and industry players is expected to be sustained for the overall development of the sector. Joshua Ojitu, NTA News. Similarly, the Cross River State House of Assembly is calling on the state government through its relevant agencies to stop the activities of migrants engaging in illegal mining in Okwa 1 and 2, as well as other communities in Buki local government area of Cross River State. This was sequel to a matter of public importance raised on the encroachment of illegal miners in the area. Oduak Etim reports. Member representing Boki One State constituency, Obi Philip Bete, expressed concern about the well being of his constituents as he sponsored a motion on encroachment of illegal miners operating in Okwa 1 and 2, as well as Ukwango in Boki local government area, thereby calling for their prosecution. He hinted that over 1,000 legal miners have entered Boki local government area in pursuit of solid minerals. It will interest to know that Okwa Kwango are in the enclave of the Cross River State National Park and uh, they are inside the government reserve. And uh, I know that uh, miners can get license to mine in the reserve. If the government do not do anything as urgent as we are calling government to do, you will soon begin to hear cases of kidnapping cases of uh, armed robbery. Other lawmakers noted that illegal mining is usually accompanied by criminality and called on security agencies to beef up security in the area. Mining comes with a lot of criminality, uh, kidnapping, armed robbery. They were here in hundreds. Now they are in thousands. We don't even know what they are destroying. I so support this move 
that we should be serious about it. Speaker Cross River State House of Assembly pointed out that illegal mining contributes greatly to environmental degradation and promised that the 10th Assembly will ensure the people of Boki do not suffer any negative consequences. And of course, there are not any mining in any other portion of land or in the reserved area. So we won't allow that. The leadership of such communities is not sensitized to this. That this is not a call for war. As a way to engage them, make sure we don't use any of these illegal weapons. We need the fact that we are to hand them over to the the House resolved that security agencies be deployed to the affected communities in Calabar, Udwak Etam, NTA News. Still on electricity, to optimize infrastructure efficiency and create a more resilient and self-sufficient energy, Nasrallah State House of Assembly has passed for second reading a bill that will allow and provide for electricity generation, transmission, system operation, distribution and supply in the states. Adams Abdelkadi reports that a bill for a law to make provision for right of way in national states and for other matters connected therewith was passed. The discussion of the lawmaker centers on a bill for a law to repair the national state electricity power agency law 2018, which sole aim is to increase energy security and reliability, reduce its dependency on external power sources. The lawmakers maintain that if the bill passed into law, it will not only provide independence of the state to generate power, transmit, distribute independently, but it will also lead to stable electricity supply, economic growth, and attracting investment and fostering the development of renewable energy sources. With electricity, we can have opportunity to enjoy life. With electricity, we can have opportunity to get employment. With electricity, most especially, we always talk about issue of insecurity. We need 24-hour electricity so that our people will live in safe. I prefer to call them NEPA. Never expect power all the times. If you look at what they are doing, they have failed the country totally. They have failed Nigerians totally. They have failed Nasrallah State totally. Perhaps, as we are deliberating here, this hollow chambers is being powered by our generation set. This be, there is no how the agency would generate power without putting that federal work into function. And that play, it will create a lot of job employment to our people. Two, we can hold them responsible whether the transmissions of this light, where does they have problem? Because we will know where our source of generation, we will know where our source of transmission, we will know where the source of our distribution. And those people that are going to employ them to take care of these three stages, they are our brothers and sisters from this state. Do Madame alone can power North Central if it is put into right use. We have the Corridor Waterfalls, which we can also use that to generate electricity. The actual speaker, we have more than enough gas in Nasrallah State. We have more than enough coal. We have one of the best coal in Nasrallah State, the Shanko Ijangwa coal in Ubi. I happen to have visited there myself. Mr. Speaker, the deposit of coal you have in Ubi is even exposed at Jangwa. It's exposed like a mountain, more than enough to power whatever facility you might require. And Mr. Speaker, I don't want to look at this in the uh, IGR getting more revenue. Electricity is expensive. We should not deceive people that when we have lights, it's not going to be cheap. Meanwhile, a bill for a law to make provision for rights of way in natural state and other matters connected thereto passed for assent by the executive governor. And pass. Clerks, please prepare a clean copy of the bill for my producer and Send to that we can send to His Excellency for his assent. Thank you. Also, two separate private bees skate for reading. In the meantime, the screening of Governor's nominee Yusuf Sariki Iya as Nasrallah State Auditor General generates reaction where disagreement break out between the lawmakers. Some of his reference questions being asked by the minority leader. In the affidavit, I think it's there. Every agency of our state in the state 
must do the right thing by the constitution. Nobody in Nasarawa state can change you from the screen and confirm the nomination of Iya Yusuf Sariki as Auditor General of Nasarawa State. Thank you. In Lafia, Adams Abdul Kadri, NTA News. Recess in the Nigerian parliament is an important part of the legislative process with multidimensional objectives for effective governance and overall functioning of the legislative institution. In this report, Amina Saidu takes a look at recess as a crucial part of activities in the National Assembly. Recess in the Nigerian parliament refers to a period where both chambers of the National Assembly temporarily halt their former legislative activities. During this time, regular plenary sessions are suspended and lawmakers do not meet to discuss or pass legislation. The period does not imply a complete shutdown of parliamentary duties as legislators may continue with constituency work, committee meetings and other non-plenary responsibilities. After one full year of work, you are entitled to vacation or what is called legislative recess. In the legislature, it is called uh, legislative recess, where the legislature goes on vacation for about six weeks to eight weeks. But normally it's nine weeks because sometimes something will happen and we'll say we'll go on from August, from July, uh, end of July to perhaps end of September. But it will flow into the first week of um, October. No. Recess allows lawmakers time to review the progress of the legislative agenda gather information and prepare for upcoming debates and bill considerations. You want to bond with your family, take a little vacation, and then do constituency uh, inspection, constituency relations. You meet with your constituency. You stay in your constituency office. People in your constituency will now come to your office and meet you. The plenary is on, 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 on break. But the committees are still meeting. There are many committee meetings, um, uh, like this seminar is, is, is part of it, organized by the Committee on uh, States and Local Government. Uh, last week, you had a, the um, stakeholders meeting in the Senate on the oil sector. You know, so there are many, still many committees meeting. We don't have to have plenary to be at work. We are still working. This interaction strengthens the democratic process and ensures that the concerns of the electorate are represented in the legislative agenda. Recess periods also provides opportunities for political parties and individual lawmakers to strategize on key policy issues, build alliances, and prepare for the upcoming elections. Well, as I said, the, the recess is just is there, but we are still working. We are still working. Most of us are meeting with ministers, meeting with uh, uh, DGs, and meeting with uh, others, focusing on those important things that we want to be done for our constituencies. Just because they say it's a reset doesn't mean that we now start flying all over the world. No. Um, I personally uh, have not undertaken any official visit outside Nigeria. I don't need to. I am focusing on those solutions that must be um, put together for our people, not, not just my people in Delta, but for Nigerians. While recess is a standard practice in parliaments globally, members say it is essential to maintain transparency and communicate the ongoing activities during recess to avoid public misperception of inactivity. Amina Saidu, NTA News. Let's now join Representative Francis Ejiro Gene. Chairman House Committee on Rules and Business through Zoom to speak further on the nature, necessity, and impact of recess in Parliament. Thank you, Honorable Francis, for joining us on Parliamentary News. I thank you very much. Um, Honorable, let's start with what is the nature of recess in Parliament? Many uh, observers and many of even our critics don't understand uh, the term uh, recess in parliamentary palace. So it's important that this is uh, explained to the understanding of the vast majority of our people. Uh, the nature of recess is that it's usually a two month period of uh, rest, of being on vacation, of 
uh, being uh, free from active work, particularly plenary sessions. As to whether there will be a layer in parliamentary activities, well, during the first session, that's the first year, that first uh, recess will be a good time for new members, particularly, to find their footing, get their offices together, get their staff together. As it goes on to the uh, second, third year, uh, the fourth year, during recess, members usually, you know, would, would really take some time off to rest, except that sometimes there will be uh, parliamentary visits with uh, exchange with other countries' parliament, and then sometimes to some committee work. Uh, will be on, but usually it's a time that is devoid of plenary completely. And if there's going to be any emergency plenary sitting, it has to be under extraordinary circumstances. Well, thank you very much, Honorable. Um, how many holidays does the National Assembly have in, in a year? Uh, it's once every year, but in our polity, people mistake the breaks that Parliament has during public holidays. Uh, the Salah holidays, the Christmas holidays, the New Year holidays, the Independence Day holiday, Democracy Day holiday. When there are breaks like this, some uh, Nigerians mistake it as part of the recess. But that is not a recess. It's a usual break, a public holiday. And when two of them are closed, for instance, Easter and Salah, if they are just a few days apart, you do the two together. Otherwise, recess is once a year and consequently four times in the in life of a parliamentary assembly. Uh, in the first session, there will be one second session, and the session is usually one year. So this is how the term recess uh, applies in our country, and uh, breaks must be differentiated from uh, uh, recess. Recess takes place only once in a year between the middle of uh, July and the middle of September, every year. And for the legislative year, it starts after the inauguration of the house, the proclamation and inauguration. Then the next thing that takes place is the um, uh, election of presiding officers, uh, principal officers being selected, and then chairman and membership of committees being constituted. While plenary is going on till about the middle of July, and then the recess actually begins. This is a time for the first year members can now recap and uh, take the time to. Uh, get their food together, get their offices together, their staff together, and get ready for full legislative work. Well, that is insightful. Thank you, Honorable. Uh, last but not the least, must the recess come in a particular period of the year? Now, for us in Nigeria, Parliament is usually proclaimed by the President, and uh, after it being sworn in on the 29th of May, usually coming in about the middle of June. In uh, uh, the ninth assembly, for instance, we came in on the 11th of June, and this tenth assembly we came in on the 13th of June. On that particular day, there will be uh, election of uh, the presiding officers. Thereafter, there will be meetings where uh, principal officers will be nominated by the various parties and then uh, put into office. And after that, there will be all the lobby that goes on for committee positions, chairmanships, and memberships, and all of that. So all that will go on for about another one month, and then uh, we'll then go on the break about the middle of July, that first uh, session, that first year of that assembly. And it's usually from the middle of July to about the middle of September. And it's something that you can predict because all over the world is about the same thing. And uh, you can also compare this with what happens in the judiciary. If you have a matter in court, and you go before the courts at this time, you know they would ask you to come uh, join your matter till about October because the courts will be on recess. So this is what uh, happens. Thank you very much, Honorable Francis, for joining us. Uh, I thank you very much. This is NTA Parliament News. Still to come, federal government synergizes with National Assembly towards addressing insecurity. This and more after the break. Stay with us.
The Minister of Finance, Olawale Edun, and that of Budget and National Planning, Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, have emphasized the need for more collaboration among the three tiers of government and other development partners in tackling security challenges confronting the nation. This was during an interaction with the House of Representatives Committee on Alternative Education regarding out-of-school children and its consequences to the national security. National Assembly correspondent Issa Muhammad reports. Available statistics by UNESCO in 2021 revealed that Nigeria ranks third on the table of countries with high rate of out-of-school children behind India and Pakistan. Experts relate this to increasing rate of crimes and criminalities, just as stakeholders collaborate to address the situation. One of such efforts is the engagement between the Minister of Finance with that of Budget and National Planning and the House Committee on Alternative Education to share perspectives towards overcoming the challenge of out-of-school children as it poses danger to national security. The ministers highlighted plans to mop up 10 million out-of-school children to help eradicate poverty and confront insecurity holistically. Right, because the moment you acknowledge your challenge, you can only do better. And that's why, President, that's why you say, let us confront our reality. Let us not blame anybody in the past. It's not, it's not for lack of trying, but we need much, much bigger sums of money to fund our priorities. There is a Safe Schools Initiative. It is funded and it is um, a robust plan that has international um, uh, relevance and backing in order to um, keep our children safe in schools. The committee says a fallout of the recent protest makes it urgent for stakeholders to come up with measures that are realistic. To effectively tackle this challenge, there is an urgent need to synergize between all levels of government, the parliament and the key stakeholders across the divide. The committee also engaged National Commission for Nomadic Education, National Commission for Mass Literacy, Adult and Non-Formal Education, as well as National Commission for Almagiri and Art of School Children Education on the issue, as it also scrutinizes their spending proposals for the preceding year. From the National Assembly, Isa Muhammad, NTA News. Following the flood disaster that submerged Tangaza Bali Road in Sokoto State, the State House of Assembly has moved a motion calling on the state government to use gravels on the detour created to ease movement of goods and services in the area. Nuruddin Abdullahi Adili has more. Flood has continued to be a source of worry to many communities in Sokoto State and Gaza Bali Road that led to good local government area of the state had seriously been affected by the flood. This necessitated the motorists to divert alternative routes from Mad village of Tangaza, which is about 10 kilometers. Compounding the situation is the moody nature of the area that forced vehicles to take longer period before crossing. It is again this backdrop that the member representing Gudu Constancy, Amoria, he have presented a motion on the floor of the house calling on the state government to use gravels on the diverted road so as to facilitate free movement of vehicle. Yahya added that the flood affected about 10 communities in Tangaza and Gudu local governments. <laughs> Many members contributed in support of the motion with a call on the state government as a matter of urgency do the needful to its transportation system and the evacuation of farm produce during harvest. So I'm to my honorable colleagues to just consider the matter he presented and call on the state government as a matter of urgency to construct that road for the benefit of its constituents. The Speaker, Tukurubala Bodinga, announced the House unanimous resolve to call on the state government to look at the possibilities of displaying gravels in the area as soon as possible. From Sokoto State House of Assembly, Nuruddin Abdullah Adeli, NTA News. 
in an effort to mitigate the impact of climate change on the people and agricultural productivity in Jigawa State, the state government is collaborating with the House Committee on Ecological Fund to build climatic resilience in the state. Mohammed Musa Askira has the details. The synergy between the Jigawa State Government and the National Assembly through the House Committee on Ecological Fund, led by Honorable Aminu Sani Jaji, will avail the opportunity for Jigawa to access resources to fight ecological problems in the state. Climate change effects such as flash flooding, desertification, and gully erosion, among others, have since been identified to inhibit economic development in the state. The visit of the House Committee on Ecological Fund was extended to some of the affected areas to see the magnitude of damage on the residential and farmlands in Jigawa State. The tour is to select some few states among the 36 that we have in the Federation that we think they deserve to have a special intervention in the areas of uh, ecological uh, challenges so as uh, to complement the effort of Mr. President in his renewable agenda in addressing the issue of climate change and food security. The water in the dams has not been released yet, and we know how our dams are completely silted. And by the time the overflow and the water is released, only God knows what will happen. To Mr. Chairman, as at today, for the perennial rain, we have 14 local governments that are affected by flood. As at today, we have almost close to 40,000 people that are affected as at today. The committee has promised to do everything within its power to assist the state in addressing some of the ecological challenges being faced. From Duty, Muhammad Musa Askira, NTA News. That's the size of our package this evening. Do join us again tomorrow, Thursday, for another bulletin. Remember, NTA stands against rapists and rape. You can follow us for news updates on our social media handles showing on your screen. Thank you for watching and do have a great evening. I am Abakar Galadima.